welcome by. Today we're going to get back to the basics. In Lightburn you have a mode selection and in that mode selection you can either select line, fill, or fill plus line. What does each one of those modes do? That's what we're going to learn today. Stick around. So here's the goal for today. This is the same pattern and we're going to apply a different mode to each one of these patterns to get three completely different looks for this ornament. This particular ornament is going to be with a line command. This ornament is going to be with a fill command. And then this ornament is going to be a fill command with an additional line uh, added to the design. So you can see that you have three completely different looks with really very little effort. Um, these two, you're just changing it from line mode to fill mode. And then this particular design, we would be adding an additional line to our design, changing our mode to fill, and away we go. And you can see that these three designs are completely different with the same pattern. Once you understand how the fill process works, you'll be amazed on what you can do with the designs you have. Check it out and let's go to the computer. Today we're going to get back to the basics in Lightburn. One of the things in each one of your layers is a mode indication. And based on what you select, whether it's line, fill, or fill plus line, will have a dramatic effect on what your laser is going to do. What we'll do is we'll go over each one of these modes and I'll discuss um, how your laser is going to react to it. So the way I've got this laid out is I've got four different layers. I've got black, red, blue, and green. And so the black layer is, this is just a one inch square with some text underneath it. And what I want to do is show you or demonstrate to you kind of how the laser acts based on the different mode settings. So in this particular case, I've got the black layer set to line. My speed is 350 millimeters per second at 18% power. Yours may be different. Uh, this is going to be run on a, a Thunder Laser Nova 2460 watt. And again, these are for just demonstration purposes, but um, you'll see here in the pictures and videos of the actual uh, cuts that I make, it, it uh, illustrates really well. So when you select the mode line, basically the laser head is going to be just follow the, uh, the, the design you have. It's going to outline it. So what will happen is the laser will come over, it will go and uh, follow the line. Same with the text. It's just going to follow the text on the outside of the text. And basically what you see is what you get in this particular case. If we preview it, you're going to see this is what's going to happen. Okay, it's just going to it's just going to outline it. So if you scrub this, the laser is going to come and it's going to follow it, and then it's going to go ahead and it's just going to go ahead and outline the text and move on. Fairly simple. Um, there's not too much more to it than that. Of course, if you want your line to be deeper or darker. What you would do is you would reduce your speed and increase your power until it meets to what your uh, desired intent is. Now, one of the other things that a lot of people get confused by is there's no cut mode. You notice line, fill, fill plus line. What cut mode is is really just the line command with the speed greatly reduced and the power greatly increased. So it's just the same as this one over here. It's just that you've changed your settings so the laser will actually punch through the material that you have. So there is no cut command. It's a line command with your settings changed. Now your fill command, as far as this blue layer, you notice I've got it selected to fill. I'm back up to 350 millimeters per second and 25% power. And what it's going to do is it's going to come back and move the laser back and forth this way. And it's going to go ahead and completely fill in the one inch square along with the text. So you can see it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it fills that in. Now, based on your setting, 
on your speed and your power will depend on how deep that goes into your material. If you slow your uh, speed down and increase your setting, that fill is going to push deeper down into your wood. It's going to be deeper and deeper and deeper. If it's too deep, you need to increase your speed and slow down, or uh, increase your speed and uh, lower your power, and then it will uh, change. Okay? So fill is pretty much just as exactly what it indicates. Now fill and line, um, what it will do is it, you notice I've got the same settings. It will do the same thing. It will come in here. It will fill in the text, fill in the box. But then what it's going to do is it's going to go around the perimeter of your design and give it a nice crisp edge. And you'll see this when I show you the video of these uh, examples that I've got uh, cut out. This is a great function for text or a design that you want it to stand out. Let's go to the video and I'll show you these uh, on an eighth inch piece of Baltic birch. Okay, so this is what we had illustrated in the uh, light burn file. You can see that the line, basically just the laser is going to trace out your design. It's going to follow the, the, uh, the lines that you've got illustrated on your screen, and that's about it. If you want it to be deeper or more bold, you would increase your power, reduce your speed, those kind of things. Pretty, pretty straightforward on what line does. Remember, there is no cut in uh, light burn, you basically give it the line command and increase your power, reduce your speed, and it will go ahead and cut it out. Okay? Then you've got your fill. Your fill goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and basically fills in whatever you want, whether it's your text uh, or your uh, design. One of the things that we're going to talk about is how fill interacts when you have multiple uh, lines in your design. Um, and that's where you can really be creative in what the output result is. One thing that you'll see, and I think you could probably see a difference. Let me see if I can move the camera and zoom in on this a little bit. When you fill and then fill with line, you will see that um, this over here is a lot crisper. And even, in, uh, even on the square, it really stands out. It just, it just makes a big difference. So line plus fill uh, will take you a little bit longer, but in some cases, um, it does make a difference on your design. These are exactly the same settings, except the only difference is I've indicated fill plus line with this layout versus just fill with this layout. So if you haven't used fill plus line much, give it a try. In some cases, it really will make your designs pop. Okay, so the next thing that we need to learn is how fill reacts when you have multiple lines in your design. And once you understand the way Lightburn thinks, uh, you can really make a big difference in the way your output of your projects look. This really, this philosophy is a key to, to how those three ornaments that I showed you at the beginning of the video on how I changed the look of those three ornaments with really very little effort. So let's take a look here. We've got a, a rectangle here. I've got it set to fill. And if I would preview it, in other words, if I would just take it to the laser and burn it, it's going to fill in the entire inside of that particular rectangle. And so that's pretty straightforward. I want to fill in that rectangle. It doesn't get any simpler than that. But most of the time, our designs have multiple lines in them. And then when you set your layer to fill, sometimes you will get some wild results. And so you have to understand kind of oh, the process that Lightburn uh, goes through in order to, to, to uh, use this fill command. So let's keep it, keep it basic. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and um, offset a shape by a quarter of an inch And now, if I set that to fill, I haven't changed this setting at all. If I go in here and I say, okay, show me what that looks like, you'll notice now that just the frame itself is colored or filled in and the center is um, untouched. This is where you start to begin to understand how Lightburn works. So the way that works is the first line 
Then it comes to, it turns the laser on. So which means what it's going to do is it's going to turn the laser on and it's going to fill in between these two lines. So it's going to come turn the laser on and then when it crosses this line, it's going to turn the laser off, meaning that this middle part is not going to be filled in. So it's going to turn the laser on, fill in this um, uh, border, turn it off, leave the middle untouched. If we come in and we add another line, and preview it. If you follow that same philosophy, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, what's going to happen is this part of the uh, rectangle is going to be filled and the middle is going to be filled. Let's check it out. There you go. So we came, uh, we came along this edge, we turned the laser on, we filled in this section, we turned the laser off, this section's not filled in. We, we crossed another line, and this section's filled in. So you can see now, by just doing some very basic things, we have the ability to control on what that laser fills in and what it doesn't. So just remember, uh, in your designs, <clears throat> first line it crosses, it's going to fill it in. Then it crosses another line, it's going to turn it off. Those kind of things. So what that means when we come to a more intricate design is we have the ability to really determine the outcome. Let's check out the, uh, the ornament that I've got, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've, I've switched files, and we've got this ornate uh, ornament. And right now, um, I've got it layered uh, as black with strictly a line command, 350 millimeters per second at 18% power. I haven't done anything other than bring this file in. I haven't added any lines to it. It's basically just a, a design. If I go ahead and preview that, you can see what the laser is going to do is it's truly going to just sketch out all the different lines that um, I've illustrated. And that's one look. Okay, that's the, 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 the first ornament that I showed you. Okay, fairly straightforward. If I come in here and change this to the blue layer, which is a fill command, and I preview it, what's going to happen is, remember, it's going to come across, and the first line it sees from the outside, it's going to it's going to fill it in, and then when it crosses another line, it's not going to fill it. So you can see that it's completely changed what your layer, well, excuse me, what your laser is going to do. Another uh, completely different look. Okay, and we didn't do, we didn't modify the design in any way. All we did is change the mode from line to fill. Now here's where it gets fun. Okay, so let's do the third one. What I'm going to do is I've, uh, I'm going to keep this layer as fill, and the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add an external line that's going to follow this outline, and you'll see what happens. So I've got it selected. I'm coming over here to the offset. I'm going to offset it to the outside, and you notice now it's added an additional line all the way around the perimeter of this design. Not that I haven't done anything else, okay? Now, since we've added this additional line, what's going to happen is it's going to turn the laser on and fill this in, and it's going to turn this off, this on, this off. And so you'll see if we preview this now, this will look completely different. Now you can see that the majority of this design is filled in. So the black parts are going to be where the laser burns in. The white parts are going to be untouched. And you can see that there's a big difference in how this looks. So just remember, by adding additional lines to your, your design, when you're using the fill command, can have dramatic effects in the way things look. Give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Well, as you can see, understanding the mode command in Lightburn will have dramatic effects on what your projects look like. Give it a try. I hope this information was helpful. 
If you please like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, and have a great day.